prison officer here. If any of the ex-cons are reading this they may get a laugh out of it. I was working in a high security at risk unit where we housed prisoners with suicidal tendencies. One prisoner in particular liked to fill his mouth with his piss and garbage and spit it on you through the gaps in the doors. One day I forgot to walk wide of his cell and all of a sudden, bam, he hit the inside of the door with the palm of his hand. Fuck it gave me a jolt and I've been an officer for 13 years. When I turned towards his cell I yelled as loud as I could. He got a fright and swallowed pretty much all he had in his mouth. Within seconds, there was projectile vomiting from the prisoner. The fluffed up part was that we had to clean the cell as the prisoner was taken to medical for OBS. Piss. Garbage. Vomit. It was bad. It's a tough job sometimes. It's not me. But my husband was in prison as a young adult. He said that they had a way of checking your ego in the spot he was at. The toughest guys would come up to you on your first day and ask how many push-ups you could do. If you were smart you would just sorta of blow it off or laugh it off and move on. If you were a stupid show off or had something to prove you would claim a large number or talk your self up. If you did that then they would be all friendly and be like oh, let's see it. So the poor guy would do as many push-ups as they could. The tough guys would gas the new guy up, acting friendly, pushing him to do more. They acted impressed and joked around. Then as soon as the new guy had done as many push-ups as possible they would jump him and beat him up. He would be helpless to resist because he had maxed himself out on push-ups. Afterwards any guy with an ego was normally really quiet for the remainder of their stay. I spent a couple weeks in county jail. On the first day, when we were all being processed into the facility, strip, bend over, spread your cheeks, and cough. We were told very succinctly we never ever even joke about suicide while in the facility. Kinda like how you just don't say, bomb, on an airplane anymore. By day three, I had a good understanding of the other guys I was locked up with. I was physically the biggest of the white guys in our pod, so all the white kids huddled around my table at meals to keep away from the Hispanic folks and the black folks. Yes. There are three teams in correctional facilities whether you like it or not. There was one kid in the group that seemed underdeveloped mentally. He probably had the learning disability among other things. But he essentially acted like a 12-year-old. I knew early on he was going to get himself in trouble because he never stopped talking or moving. And he was rubbing everyone the wrong way. I tried to tell him to chill out and be invisible but he was not understanding what I was telling him as your I had been there a week. When the 12 year old finally lost his cool completely, he was in the shower, singing and joking around, putting on a performance that went too far, and he pooped on the floor as a joke. After the other guys in the shower grabbed their towels and ran, he proceeded to kick the poop all over the walls and into the other shower stalls. I didn't shower for the rest of my stay. Truth be told, it turned into a big scene. And then when the trustees came in to clean up the poop all over the walls it turned into an even bigger scene. The whole time, the 12 year old was locked in a cell near the showers. Laughing and joking as other inmates had to clean up his poop and make the shower area sanitary. Again, state run facilities have standards after all. The next day, everyone was looking at the 12 year old with hate in their eyes. Kinda like Gomer Pyle in Full Metal Jacket. Everyone missed their showers the day prior due to the poop sedent. And then the kid was still up to his antics at breakfast the next day. Everyone got really cold toward him. Even openly mean. I'll admit, I started ignoring him completely after the poop. It took him a day or two to realize he was hated by all. And then his personality changed dramatically. He became sad, despondent, and started talking to the COs because the other inmates wouldn't talk to him anymore. He fluffed up, and told the COs that he should just harm himself and make everyone happy. And that was all it took. They dragged out the blue burrito. This is the scariest thing I had seen in jail. 
The blue burrito was a 10-foot-long blue foam mat, like you would use in gym class with two 12-foot-long red belts attached. They laid it out on the floor, forced the 12-year-old to lay on the mat, and then they rolled him up with his arms at his sides into the blue burrito. The two long red belts clipped together at the top and bottom of the burrito keeping it all nice and tight. This was the suicide protocol at the jail. No counseling, no medical ward, you lose the ability to move. They put that poor brother in the burrito around 8 p.m., dragged him into his cell and left him laying on the floor, wrapped up tight, until breakfast the next morning, around 8 a.m. The child molesters and gang members in protective custody get to eat breakfast first. Imagine being unable to move, barely able to breath, with no end in sight for 12 hours on the floor of your 8x8 cell. My cell was up above his, and I heard him weeping and moaning in agony all night. He didn't say a word to anyone, or look anyone in the eye for that matter for the rest of the time I was there. One night in the Blue Burrito broke him his ear. Not a prisoner, but a former correctional officer. Saw a dude detoxing from alcohol die. Responded to a maintenance worker stabbing another inmate in the head with a screwdriver. And was involved in containing a riot. I, I did a couple years when I was young and dumb. The craziest garbage I saw was actually in the county jail and not the state prison. The county jail was right on the Texas-Mexico border so there were a lot of Hispanics. What was weird was the Hispanics born in America and the Mexicans from Mexico absolutely hated each other. I saw a Hispanic from Texas heat up a bowl of water until it was boiling in the microwave. We had microwaves in the tank, and he then proceeded to throw the boiling water on a Mexican from Mexico's face and then beat the ever-loving garbage out of him is here that dude's screams will haunt me forever. I also saw a guy take a blade from a small pencil sharpener, tie it to a toothbrush and then slice a guy's face from ear to ear while he was sleeping. The guy lived but it looked like a fluffing murder scene. I was taking a shower in a communal shower. This guy walks in and is immediately jumped by four dudes. One guy takes out the metal strip to a safety razor and proceeds to cut this dude's fluffing ear off. Good times lol edit. Typo. Not me, but one of my dad's friend was in jail and said he saw an inmate garbage into his pillow. Not a prisoner, but an ex-guard. I worked at a juvenile detention facility in New Mexico. The absolute scariest thing I ever saw was a young boy, nine years old booked in for murdering both of his parents. There was nothing there. I failed to call this thing even human. I looked into this child's eyes and felt more fear than I ever have to this day. This was no child. It was a monster. Pure evil. Condensed and given human form is urine hash x200b. And to clarify, I have booked and looked after murder suspects before. It was nothing new. But this kid was different very different. He never broke any rules and always followed commands but never, ever spoke unless directly asked something. And then it was curt, short, just to answer a question. He never cried, either, which is highly unusual for a nine-year-old kid in jail. He was eventually tried and transferred to mental facility. But I'll never forget the kid's eyes. It haunts me to this day. I was in a minimum I saw some brutal flights. But the worst thing I ever witnessed was from some idiots. They stole some misopropyl alcohol from the med unit somehow, brought it back, mixed it into drinks and drank it. They were fluffed, throwing up worse than I have ever seen and down four eight sick as fluff screaming in agony shriveled in. A ball on the floor. I've heard of people drinking floor stripper for GHB or some garbages. But fluff. The things people will do to try and get fluffed up is way beyond anything I can comprehend. Also a bonus answer for you. The worst scariest most painful thing I've ever dealt with. I got scabies and had it for 11 months. I was treated several times for it but because people were infected around me I kept getting it. If you have never had it or even heard of it be thankful. 
I have scars on my body from scratching because of how itchy and uncomfortable I was. I finally had to threaten a hunger strike. You want them to listen in prison? Go to medical, ask them for the lieutenant and say you are going on a hunger strike. They treated me a last time and put me on a psych hold in isolation for three days. When I got out they transferred me to a new housing unit and I never got it again. Obligatory not a prisoner but an ex-correctional officer. I once had to work overtime in a segregation unit. The first thing that happens upon entering this unit is we get a call that an inmate who was out on a medical trip was coming back in and was to be placed into a suicide watch cell. This inmate had been taken to an outside hospital for cutting his arm from his wrist to his bicep. We placed him in the suicide watch cell and went to find a bed mat for him, which was hard cause he couldn't have won with a hole in it while being on suicide watch. He told me that if I didn't get him a bed mat in five minutes, he was going to start ripping stitches, I told him to wait. Went to find a mat and it had apparently been six minutes. Cause by the time I got back, he had torn off his bandages and ripped out every single stitch in his arm as here the blood was all over the place. We could easily see the muscle and fat in his arm as here he agreed to cuff up and went on his merry way back to the outside hospital. I later found out he had only initially done it cause he wanted to get out of prison for a while. That fact alone messed me up. I spent a day in country jail. The same jail where a family member worked it for a while as a lieutenant. It was his retirement job, meaning easy work. When you get into country they give you a wristband with your full name and a barcode on it. For that 20-something hours I did everything I could to try to hide my last name because it is very distinctive and the same as my family member. Not me but a teacher of mine told me a story of one of her students that spent a week in juvie. He wasn't there for more than two days when a gang of boys attacked him sliced his back up with razors and raped him as here no one knew until they came to release him and his mom put a hand on his back only to hear him scream in pain because of all the cuts on his back. I saw a mentally challenged person, not able to understand simple commands, be beaten with flashlights until their eyes popped out. We were in release processing and the gates were broken. We were told to stay inside the cells. No one wanted to fluff up because we were about an hour from being let out which they do in batches, this guy had someone he knew in the cell across from his. He kept trying to go in there. The guards kept putting him back and getting more and more pissed, the inmates were getting mad too. Afraid that he would fluff up the release schedule and several people started threatening the dude. I could see by the glaze in his eyes that he had not a clue what was going on except he wanted to. See his friend, the last time he walked out the cell door inmates were screaming for the guards. Because no one wanted the release fluffed up. Six sheriffs came and beat the fluff out of the guy. He had getting pounded with a flashlight with his head on the concrete. Boom, boom, boom. Then an eye popped out and everyone started screaming but the pounding continued. Boom, boom, boom. Other eye flies out. It definitely fluffed up the release and we all stayed another 36 hours while they cleaned it up. Not prison but juvie. I was there waiting to go to a mental hospital and the other girls tried making me block the cameras while they beat up a snitch. Turn out their mutual friend was the real snitch and they became BFFS. That's not the scariest though he also took turns seeing who could deep throat a banana the farthest dot but they used the sesame banana i saw a guy keep scratching his arm until it bleed then he took harry in and put it inside the wound because he didn't have a needle it was completely fked he was doing it in the courtyard under the camera so the camera couldn't see him as here i hope never to see anything that fluffed like it seemed like he would do anything to get that Harry and into his bloodstream. I've been incarcerated for the past three years. Still am in a work release. And the scariest thing I've witnessed by far when I was the main prison I saw a dude get beat across the head with walkie-talkies then dragged into solitary confinement.
A few weeks later when he got out we were in the rec yard he was playing basketball and collapsed. He was gushing blood out of his mouth. We were then told to return to Outdorms FDLE. Florida Department of the came, snapped some pictures, picked up his body and left. Nothing at all happened afterwards. Officers kept walking the compound with complete immunity. During a stint I'd say it's probably a pretty crazy fight. I think it was about a game of cards in which the pot was quite a bit of canteen items. Chips, drinks, chocolate bars, ramen and the like. One guy, call him Guy A, was accused of cheating, denied it, was an argument, which led to the whole table checking his hand and he was indeed cheating. So two other prisoners, call them Guy B and C, convinced this guy, don't know how or why, to go to their house for a chat. Lo and behold Guy A goes with. Not five minutes later, these dummies come rolling out of B and C's house fighting like crazy, bashing Gaia over the head with a radio, about as big as a fist. Piece of the radio breaks and now they're bashing it into his head with a bunch of jagged garbage. Hanging from it, ripped up Gaia's skull to the point I'm certain you could see his skull. Blood everywhere, darn near looked like a murder scene. The goon squad come busting in. Pepper spray and tasers ready. Guy A is pretty much on the ground already. Guy B surrenders after getting sprayed down. God awful smell by the way. Guy C thinks he's tougher than nails. So he charges at the goon squad only to get knocked by a taser after which he was swarmed by half. The darn goon squad. Guy C isn't exactly a small guy. He's like 6 feet 6 inches and never misses wreck. They finished tasing him. He swept the goons off him and rushed again, only to be maced more and tased again. Suffice it to say, the second Joel did it. Guy C drops to the ground. Gaia gets carried away in a stretcher. Lo and behold, due to the overcrowding problem at the prison during this time we aren't allowed to be relocated. While they do crime scene stuff on the block, we were stuck in our cells, fed in our cells and unable to get any rec time. Save for a legally mandated one hour a day to go out to the courtyard which is only like 20 by 20. That was a crazy time. I was in jail once waiting to see a judge. They'd move me to three different jails in three days for some reason. I wasn't a troublemaker and was only in for driving on a suspended license. But I am big and scary looking. Anyways, when they transferred me to court, I was handcuffed to someone serving life and he was Aryan Brotherhood. I'm Hispanic, but look completely white and have a shaved head. He told me blacks were greenlit and that I had to swing on sight. If I saw a black man within reach, I was required to fight him, or they would beat or kill me later. It was a scary, and luckily the COs were aware and kept everyone separate until the green light ended not a prisoner but went there on a field trip. But I saw a guy stand on another one's back, who was doing like a downward dog kind of thing, and was pissing over a wall divider where we later found out was the shower block. Uh, in some county jails they have 190 degrees water taps. They're there so inmates can make oatmeal, soup, or coffee without a microwave or any kitchen appliances. Well sometimes when there were flights, you would see an inmate fill a cup with 190 degrees water and a glob full of Vaseline. Then he would throw it on his opponent. Watching that will stick with me for a while. Mainly the terrible scream the man made is the Vaseline stuck to his face. He was taken to medical right after that. He had third degree burns all over his face and hands. I was on a pod with UABs and Hoover Crips. It was considered a security threat group pod. I'm not affiliated with either but due to overcrowding in my state's prison system I was given an open bed. I wasn't the only unaffiliated person there. There were some other guys. Not many though. Most were members of either of those gangs. Anyway, to the story. One day everyone was out on the pod just hanging around doing their thing. Keep in mind this is around 70 to 100 people in one large room a year when a black dude runs up to 
This white guy the first knew named Mutt, and stabs him in the neck with a mechanical pencil. Apparently, it doesn't go very deep and a fight ensues everyone gathers around and if you didn't know, prison is extremely racial. Whites stick up for whites and blacks for blacks and whatever. So tension are really high while this fight is happening because it's a white guy fighting a black guy. A few other race-oriented fights break out white versus black. But somehow the fights just kind of end. I really didn't understand what happened, the fights just died away. No guards, no nothing. I was standing there afraid it was going to turn into a full-on race war. That may not be exciting as some other answers, but that's pretty much it. I'm also not the best storyteller. Haha, <laughs> this isn't my story. But my uncle, we'll call him Monsieur Now M went to jail for possession of heroin. He was addicted to it at the time he went to jail, he was in prison for almost two years. Now M had friends who were in jail before, so he knew to stay out of the way and out of sight. One day a new inmate was brought in. He was put in the cell right next to my uncle's. Immediately when this guy was brought in, hostilities went up fast everyone glared at this guy M noticed everyone was glaring or threatening. This guy, my uncle M asked around as to why everyone hated this guy confused as hell. Turns out the guy was a child molester who was serving a life sentence because he raped and then murdered a young kid. One night M wakes up to the sound of beating. He can hear all of this from his cell. One of the prison guards had let himself in they beat the pedophile up as my uncle was in there he saw and heard this guy be beaten tortured and even raped. He didn't say anything because he believed the guy deserved it. My uncle cares a lot about kids. My uncle left and he heard on the news years later. The pedophile hung himself while in jail. Years of torture got to him as here as my uncle says. Not a prisoner me friend used to do industrial work in a steel factory or something. He was being trained by an Honduran worker to do forging. It was a tough job. But he said the guy was very nice and really helped him to understand. My friend has an easy time becoming friends with significantly older adults. Kept telling he was a nice dude. With a wife and daughter. Managed to legally adjust his status in my country. With a seemingly normal and honest life. A few weeks later. We find out the dude in the local news. He apparently has been arrested for a week or so for raping his own daughter and stabbed her in the back I believe. Although it wasn't very deep cut so she survived. That same friend worked for the police for a while. Not as an officer. He told me in the prison they had this punishment where if you commit a violent crime, the inmates would do that crime to you 50 times. He had been stabbed 50 times in the back, and raped his anus 50 times as well. In the newspaper you could barely tell his shirt was covered of blood and his pants of both blood and feces. Someone set themselves on fire. Some of the drug darnage people have done to themselves. Someone getting punished for opening their mouth when they shouldn't. The worst part of prison is the dementors. Was a CO. Not a prisoner. Saw a guy have his arms and legs held down by the AB in the common area. He snitched on the pod boss over something small. Other AB members on the third tier, three stories up, dropped a toilet on the guy's head. It was like a watermelon got dropped from that height. If you've ever seen the HBO documentary, Gladiator Days, HTTPS, www.youtube.com slash watch, V equals SJZGXR0OGBU. HTTPS www.youtube.com slash watch V equals SJZGXR0OGBU I was just placed in general population in Gunnison, Central Utah Correctional Facility, in the same section that then had the riot. Later, when the killing took place, it was across the way from us we could see the whole thing go down through the huge bulletproof glass windows they had between our section, Cedar 1, and the section the killing took place in, Cedar 3. The guards repeatedly ordered us to lock down in our cells but no one listened. 
The whole place was on lockdown for several weeks. I saw the documentary almost by accident years later, and it freaked me out. It was like being right back there again. Worst thing I ever experienced. There were other bad things but this one takes the cake. The sound of a guy getting lock socked by several other inmates. My uncle spent time in and out of prison for most of my life. Not a bad guy just makes terrible decisions. He told me once that his entire pod went into lockdown and the guy in his cell started to have epileptic seizures due to the stress. I guess this guy had a history of crying wolf and guards were in no rush to assist him as year he ended up choking on his vomit and dying in the cell with my uncle watching. Guy laid on the floor for an entire night before anyone came in to check. A friend of mine did a short stint. From what he told me, he was supposed to get paperwork detailing his charges before he got to prison, but did not. This made the other prisoners suspicious as they believed he was a snitch, was trying to hide that fact from them, and they threatened to beat him as an old acquaintance of his was in there and assured my friend that he had nothing to worry about as they had been threatening him for months and nothing had happened. That night while my friend was making his bed a few prisoners ran into his acquaintance's cell and beat him to within inches of his life. They were bouncing the guy's head off of the concrete to the point that my friend could hear it. My buddy says that's the moment that scared him straight. I once saw a guy get beat up with a plastic fork by not trading his pudding. My worst part of being inside was having people inside of me. I was got arrested in Toronto. Spent a few weeks at a jail called the Don. Built in 1864. Four people to a two-man cell. Anyways, a crackhead kept going into people's cells without permission. Next morning they let out put onto the range out of our cells. Fifteen dudes jumped this guy. Stomping his head. Kicking him everywhere. I will never forget this grown man screaming for his mommy. Took about three minutes for enough guards to come break it up. This was my second day there. They closed the jail down a few years after I was there due to the conditions. I'll provide the Wikipedia article on it. By the way I am American and had been arrested before in the US. I thought when I first got arrested the jails in Canada wouldn't be that bad. I was so wrong. They have a system similar to the British system that America didn't like during the revolution and this is why America's system is so much different. Https ian.monsieurwikipedia.org slash wiki slash don underscore jail